In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for His infinite love, mercy, and compassion. For allowing us once again to be in His holy house, and His holy church, uh, to share His word, which is the truth and the life-giving word of His holy gospel, the Holy Bible. I pray those who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. All glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? How are we? Mm, not bad. <laughs> you're improving. You're improving. That's very good. Excellent. We thank the Lord always. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Before we start our lesson for this evening, I would like to um, ask our uh, beloved daughter in Christ, Jacqueline, to begin this blessed evening with this hymn. Amen. All right, our beloveds, we're going to continue with our commentary on the book of Revelation. This evening, uh, we will be reading from um, chapter 16, verses 4 to 7, inclusive. It is Revelation chapter 16 and verses 4 to 7, inclusive. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the, on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous, are your judgments and all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Very well. Last week we stopped at this verse which was verse 3 of chapter 16 where it says then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. So the second angel poured his ball out onto the sea, and it turned into a blood as of a dead man. And all the creatures who were in that sea, they all died as well. We said the sea here represents the world. People of the world, um, those who have worshipped the image of the beast, who have taken the mark of the beast and worshipped the image of the beast, when the great tribulation, 
which chapter 16 is talking about. It is the great tribulation, the seven bowls, and those bowls are the wrath of God upon the entire globe. So those people of the world who rejected the Lord Jesus, worshipped Satan, took the mark of the beast, which is the satanic evil agendas of the 21st century, they all died like the blood as of a dead man. And every creature in that sea died. Meaning, if any human being follows the world, desires the world, the pleasures, the treasures, the temptations of the world, at the end of the day, the world, a time is coming, it will die, and those who are swimming, living in this world, they will die with it as well. No matter who you are, what you are, how rich, wise, smart, beautiful, intelligent, the world will die because God's wrath is coming upon it for the world has rejected the true divine God who is and will always be Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy and mighty name. So those who follow the world, those who chase after the world, they will die with it. Since the sea is going to die, then everything that lives in it will die as well. Because the source of those creatures' life was the sea. Since that source died, then whoever lived in that source, for that source, will die with it as well. What are you going to gain by chasing the world? At the end, nothing. You will lose yourself. And you will lose everything with yourself. He who has no God in his heart is dead. And not just any God. Jesus Christ. Amen. People can say whatever. People can attack the bishop in whichever way they wish. That ain't going to worry me. I won't answer you, yet I can. But I won't waste my time on childish behaviors. Whether you are a Christian attacking or a non-Christian attacking, I'll leave the Lord to answer you all. But I will pray for you. Now, verse 4 is talking about the third angel. The third angel, it says, Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Now, the first angel poured out his bowl on the earth. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they turned into blood. Now, the earth, Israel of the 21st century, end of times, the Jewish people. You see, the great tribulation is directed at the Israelite nation, our beloved Jewish people in the Middle East. Whoever is from the 12 tribes of Israel, but more so it is Israel Middle East. So the great tribulation is directed at Israel, the Jewish people. The Jewish people in the Holy Bible are resembled by the earth. The sea is the pagan world. So the great tribulation will strike Israel and by striking Israel, the entire world will be striked as well. Now, we said the great tribulation will entail World War III nuclear warheads. So nuclear war will happen. It's not, is it going to happen? If it's going, no, no, it will happen. It's just a matter of when it will happen. But I don't want to scare anyone. 
more than likely, I'll leave it at this level, more than likely it will be in this 21st century that we are living in. So, Israel will be striked, World War III. Now, Israel will be struck by a superpower, definitely not America, because at that time, America would have been really standing on an extremely shaky ground, almost gone with the wind. Another superpower will rise, more than likely, more than likely, more than likely, the superpower that will strike Israel will be China, along with Russia, Iran, and other countries with them. By the way, China has a very strong hold in, in the Middle East, more so in Iraq, the country I come from, and I'll fix these Chinese. Mr. Xing Jing Wing, don't touch my country, I smack you. So they will be striked. And when Israel is striked, it is World War III, nuclear. They are not going to waste time by sending or exchanging bullets. Street fighting, not gonna work. There will be rockets across the continents. The world will be struck, obviously. When a nuclear, when a rocket having a nuclear warhead in it land in Australia, a present from China, what's gonna happen to Australia? Gone. America. Everyone will lose with the nuclear war. Everyone loses. And what's going to happen? So the earth, Israel, will be striked because the great tribulation is directed at the house of Jacob, Israel. And then the world, the sea, the second, the second angel pours out his ball onto the sea, becomes dead. That is the pagan world, the world that is gone with the wind. They're too busy modifying viruses. They're too busy making rockets. They're too busy designing new technology, AI, artificial intelligence. Too busy. One rocket will fix all your AI. And you will be saying, I, I. <laughs> the Assyrian way, I, 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 I. Ouch, in English. And then the third ball, the third angel pours out his ball on the rivers and the springs of waters and they turn into blood. The church is the rivers. The first strike, the land, Israel, which will affect the sea, the whole world, the pagan world. And then it will affect the Christians of the end times, the church, which is the rivers and the springs of water. The church will be striked. Verse 4 is talking about the church in the end times. Christians by name, definitely not by deeds. So there will still be Christians on the face of this earth when the great tribulation comes upon the Israelite nation. But that church would have been dead in the eyes of the Lord because the church will die. It will turn into blood dead. Why it will turn into blood? Because those Christians at that time, they would have denied Jesus Christ totally. Have we been seeing the denial of the church to her beloved heavenly groom, Christ the Messiah, happening in our time and age now? Have we noticed it? My goodness. I always say to myself, I'm going to rush through him, but it's not up to me, it's up to the Holy Spirit. So don't ever say, Bishop, you're taking too long. No. You need to go and talk to the Lord Jesus himself. The church would be absolutely living in total denial. Christians by name, not by deeds. Those Christians will be like the following. 
Are you a Christian? Yes. When I was born, I was baptized as a little baby. What do you know about Jesus? Absolutely nothing. Why? I was too busy looking after my own affairs, my own life. I was chasing my own life. Too busy for Jesus Christ. That's why I was only born a Christian, but nothing to do with Christ. This church will die when the great tribulation comes. This church will die. Now, why is the church resembled by waters? Rivers, sorry, by rivers. I'm going to read you uh, this, um, this verse. It's not on the screen. But I recommend for you to write, get a pen and paper sometimes. It's very, very good. I'm going to read you this verse from the book of Ecclesiastes explaining to us why the church is the rivers. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7. This is King Solomon. says, All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. I'll read it again. Ecclesiastes 1 7. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers came initially, there they return again. Where do the, where do the rivers come from? Originally they come from the sea. But there is a difference between the sea, the water of the sea, and the water of the river. The water of the sea is salty, but the water of the river is sweet. Why? Because God has a beautiful process called distillation performed by the sun, S-U-N. When the sun strikes the water of the sea, because of the heat, that water at the surface level begins to evaporate. When the water evaporates, becomes lighter. So the vapor is lighter than liquid water. So vapor water is, is lighter than liquid water. What happens to the vapor? Starts climbing, going up. As the vapor goes up, the higher it goes, the air becomes cooler, cold. When the cold air hits, strikes that vapor, it turns into a cloud full of driplets of water. But this water now is sweet because it was distilled from the water of the sea, which was salty. God changes the salty water into sweet by directing immense heat on it. What did the Lord Jesus say to the 12 apostles? He said, you were of the world, but now you are no longer because I have chosen you from the world. You belong to me, no longer to the world. Now, earlier, what is the world resembled by? The sea, salty water. Why the world is resembled by the sea, salty water? Because the more you drink from the salty water, the thirstier you become. People of the world are never content with their life. Whatever they do, they are never happy. They'll say, when I get a million in my account, then I'll be happy. The million comes, they want more. When they get a house, they'll say, I'll be happy. They get the house, but they want more. They want more and more and more. And until they die, they keep on asking for more. Why? Because they've chased salty water. The more you drink, the thirstier you become. It's a never ending story. You're wasting your life, your breath, chasing emptiness, vanity the world where is Michael Jackson where is Mariah Carey where is Whitney Houston I come I pray for the comeback of Mariah Carey I pray for that but where are they they gained the world but where are they what did they take with them where is Robin Williams where is Augustus Caesar where are all the kings, the presidents, those who rule the world? Where are they? Where are all the wealthy people? Where are they? Gone, gone. Because they chased something that was never theirs. 
Never will be. Never will be. But what happens? The Lord directed the sun's heat onto that sea. The sun here represents trials, tribulations, hardships, because when the sun burns me, it is very painful. So many people get skin cancer by exposing their body for too long under the sun. It is extremely painful when you get struck by the sun. So the sun here are the trials, that the, the, the tribulations, the persecutions you go through for the sake of the Lord Jesus. It is not easy to turn your back to the world and give your face to Christ. It takes a lot of persecutions, tribulations and hardships. Not easy to give up on the pleasures and the treasures of the world to gain Christ. But blessed are you when you choose to go through hardships for the sake of the Lord. For you will turn, you will be turned into sweet waters, no longer salty. No longer salty. But remember, that sweet water, where is it now? High up in heaven. God has lifted you up from the filth of this world, the sea. God has raised you from the grave. God has raised you from your sinful nature, from your sinful status. God has taken you out of the pit into the heaven of all heavens. Pure white cloud and the color white represents righteousness. The Lord rose from the dead on the third day, dressed up in white. But it takes a lot of hardships because you need to carry the cross. It is the cross that purifies you. It is the cross that does the distillation process by changing you from worldly, the sea, salty water, into heavenly cloud. Saints. From sinners into saints, from earthly to heavenly, from materialistic people to spiritual beings, spiritual. But you need to suffer. Man, it's so easy to go out and have fun downtown. It's so easy to go and steal a car instead of working hard to buying one. Just sell a couple of bags of white power, powder, you'll get the Ferrari. How long will it take me by working hard, sweating it out in order to be able to buy a Ferrari? I'll write in my will for the fourth generation after me, hopefully if you're able to get a Ferrari. But even then it will be too expensive because prices keep on going up as they are always. The church, the Lord Jesus came, chose 12 apostles, then 70, and he chose them from the world. They were people of the world like anyone else. But look what happened to Simon. He became Peter. Look at the other ones. They're all saints. Where is Caiaphas? Where is Augustus Caesar? Where is King Herod? Gone because they remained in the world. They did not wish to be changed by the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They wish to remain worldly. I can't give up on my Star City Casino for the sake of the church. So are you expecting me to come to church and listen to some words being said and being sang in the church? What am I going to gain out of this? Man, let me go somewhere out there in the world and make millions of dollars. Will the church give me this? Never. But the world does. I want to be rich. I want to be strong. I want to be powerful. I want to be famous. I want to be known. You chase Christ. All you get is kicks, punches, and being spat on, ridiculed, and then deposed and kicked out. This is foolishness to chase Christ. Let me enjoy life since you only live once. Might as well enjoy it, bro. Yo, what's up? 
But where are they, those who wanted to enjoy life? Where are they? The rivers and the springs of waters will turn into blood. But in the end times, the church will deny her sweetheart. So sad. So sad. Why did the church deny the Lord? Honey, 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 make me money in this big wide world. Not bad. Money. Mammon. The Lord said you cannot worship two gods. You cannot serve two masters. It is either the true God or money. Mamona in our language. Mamona. Mammon. In English, they just translated it, you know, sounding Aramaic. Almost Aramaic. It's not Mammon. Mamona. Come, I teach you the proper pronunciation. Mamona, money. The Lord himself said, you can't worship these two gods. The Lord placed money in the level of being a God. Not the God, but a God. So if you're going to worship money, then money becomes your God. St. Paul elaborates a little bit more on what his master, Jesus Christ, has taught him. St. Paul says, the roots to all evil is the love of money. The roots to all evil is the love of money. How beautifully St. Paul elaborates on this point. Because money in its own is not evil. When does money become evil, a false god, when you start loving money? Because love was only meant to be given to God first before anyone or anything else. The moment you love someone or something before God, then that someone or that thing becomes your own false God. The church denied her heavenly groom because money became her God. And with money, there is power, there is prestigious life, there is fame, there is thrones. What killed the church is the throne. Church leaders started fighting against one another for the sake of that chair called the throne. If I'm able to fly to China, I can make it very cheap. Much cheaper than making it in Australia. We started fighting for positions. Because every leader wants to be seen. They started stepping on one another. Brothers became enemies. Why? Because they allowed mammon, money, to enter the church, the false god. And that money devoured them because money brings a lot of evil things when you begin loving money. We closed the church in the faces of the faithfuls, not allowing them to come to pray, but we opened the church for being hubs, for poisonous injection being put into the faithful's bodies. And as church leaders, we stood on the pulpits, on holy places, and spoke in public in front of the world and said, you must take the jab. You are sons of the snake. Snake. You speak lies like your father who is the father of all lies, Satan himself. I'll step on Pfizer. I'll step on Moderna. I'll step on AstraZeneca and all these stupid names. And those who made it are the sons of the snakes. They are worshippers of Satan himself. 
And I'll step on Satan in Jesus' mighty name. I'll step on him. By the way, I'm not angry. <laughs> so relax. We're going to go and have a fish burger and a chocolate sundae, baby, and we go, wah, wah, duf, duf. Oh, Sherbel is not here. Oh, no. When you, when the Lord is the crown of your glory, the Lord will reveal everything that is happening in the world and in the church. He will reveal. But why was the church submissive to evilness done in 2020? Money became the church's God, not Christ. Very simple. Very simple. I think I'm going to be stoned after this one. Please go ahead. Or maybe this way too. <laughs> like St. Stephen, the first martyr. Stone me. Do you think I care? Not one little bit. But I love you all. This is the truth. This word is for me before it's for any other church leader. Since I'm a church leader, I'm one of them. So I'm talking about myself, I'm not judging. But this is the fact of the church in the end of times in the 21st century. The church is not chasing the Lord. The church has become worldly has turned into a worldly institution. You see, the world always are fighting. They fight, they fight each other. Everyone wants to take someone else's position. Everyone wants to take someone else's fame. Everyone wants to take someone else's picture, place, star. This is the world. America went into Iraq and said that they have weapons of mass destruction. They lied in front of the entire world. I know, I am from Iraq. I know for a fact Iraq never had weapons of mass destruction. So the administration of George Bush senior and junior lied. And I'll say it in their face, in person if I see them. They lied. They killed millions of people for the sake of what? Just to be in control, in control. This is exactly what's happening in the church. Leaders who are supposed to be brothers in Christ have become enemies because I'm gonna take my brother's throne. How dare he be famous and I not. I'll do everything to get rid of that brother. I will stab him in the back and get rid of him because I want the people to come and bow and worship me, not my so-called brother. <laughs> my throne is greater than yours. Did you know the great schism that happened in 1054 was for the sake of the throne? Please, if they tell you it was because of theological implications, they're lying. The main reason was the throne. Every division that happened in the history of the church, the main, main reason was because of the throne. Nothing else. So sad. So sad. So sad, my beloveds. I don't want to dwell on it. Man, you're going to sleep here tonight. It's hot. Okay. I was speaking to Father Isaac, by the way. <laughs> so the, the church, which is the, the rivers, and the springs of water, they became blood, they died. Because when the church leaves her heavenly groom, when the church denies her Messiah and chases the world, Satan will devour the church. Satan will devour the church.
since the rivers are they represent the church then what are the springs well what's in the church bar the word of the Messiah the Holy Bible the springs is the Holy Bible the Word of God the Word of God is that spring of water I am the living waters he who comes and drinks from me shall never thirst again women you're saying this well belongs to your father Jacob truly I say to you whoever drinks from this water will thirst again because the water of this well comes from beneath but the water that I give come from above not earthly heavenly I am the logos the word that descended from heaven I am the living waters drink of me church so that you never thirst when the when you face the currents of the world you never fall but you drink from the wells of the world so uh, how much did they give you in grants five million ten million hundred million well, I can't say to this government no, because they're giving me water. So what are we going to say? We can't miss out on the water. So we'll say to our faithful, do what the government says. I brought it later. Do what the government says. Am I just going to do what the government says blindly? Even when it's evil? And then you come and say the governments are from God? <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> now that was the funniest joke I've ever heard. The government is only defined from God when it does what God wants. Not when Satan wants. Thus far, Government do an absolute evil. Absolute evil. The Lord is the light of the world. The Lord is the truth. The Lord is the living waters. The Lord is the everlasting God. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, period, people of the world. There is only one God, and you will face him one day sooner or later, and you will face Jesus. You will not see anyone else. You hold on to Moses, Moses will do you no good. You hold on to Muhammad, Muhammad will do you no good. You hold on to Buddha, Buddha will do you no good. You hold on to Krishna, Krishna will do you no good. I'm saying it with all love and respect. Please, whether you are going to take this and put it out of context, change it, twist it, uh, falsify it, that's your prerogative but I'm not gonna go there but I'm saying it to you in a very plain simple English I am saying and declaring confessing and professing that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the true divine God who was revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago yes he has come yes he was crucified by the Jewish people yes he was placed in the grave in the tomb but he rose from the tomb on the third day as it is written for he is the Messiah and the Messiah lives forever he will never die he didn't die he died in the flesh but he went as alive into the depth of the Hades and brought out all those who are captive held by Satan who slept on the hope of resurrection when the Messiah comes he raised them from that depth of the of the Sheol Hades and then he gave life for those who accepted him as Lord and Savior now this 
is the true divine God. And I'm saying it not because I'm a Christian. I'm saying it not because I'm dressed up in this outfit and I have a cross around my neck and a ring in my finger. I'm saying it because Jesus Christ revealed this truth to this piece of wreck and the real. I not only believe, I know. That's why I'm saying it. It's got nothing to do whether you are a Christian or not. It's got to do with the truth and with your salvation and redemption. Jesus is the only answer to whichever question you have. He is the only medicine for every illness you have. He's the only one. You want to believe? Up to you. You don't want to believe? Up to you. Sooner or later, you will find out for sure. Just like the Lord revealed it, He will reveal that to you. I hope it's not too late. I hope it's not too late. So the rivers, the church in the end of times which, has, which will deny the Lord and also the springs. Well, obviously when the church denies the Lord, is, the church is going to deny His word, the springs. His word will be push aside, hidden. You know what? They say, don't preach too much. Don't keep people too much in the church. Let your sermon be very short and brief, 10, 15 minutes max. Don't put too much pressure on people. And don't talk too much about Jesus Christ. People are already tired. Let them live. Let them be relaxed. Make it easy. Let them walk through the wider gate. Don't give them the narrow door. Don't make it difficult. Why are you preaching too much about Jesus? Has something gone wrong with you on your head? Say a couple of words and let people go. Where? To the bosom of Satan, to the world. Release them from the church. Don't keep them too long because they've got too much on their plates to do. Wow. Wow. Amazing. So, make the liturgy short. Next time it will be a drive through and it happened during the pandemic. They started going drive through to getting the Eucharist. One day it will be drive through and maybe with the AI, it will be AI sitting at home artificially receiving the body. But this time will be Satan, not Christ. Listen, you come to this good looking bishop, say to yourself, I'm going to cancel every appointment, every meeting, whatever you've got, because the bishop will make me sleep in the church. You ain't going nowhere, brother. I won't let you. I have red belt in karate. You go out, I smack you. The church will deny the Lord, so sad. And uh, we can see that very clearly. Huh. Some who call themselves Christians, they, are, they started already coming out in the open and saying, well, you know what? The Lord is love and we need to love everyone. We need to embrace everyone. We need to accept everyone and every color, including the rainbow. You are, you belong to Satan. You're not a Christian. This is not the Holy Bible, you liar. This is not the Holy Bible. This is not the true Christ. This is the false Christ which you have made because you chased the world. You went after Satan, not after the true Messiah. Let me tell you one thing with all love and respect and humility. Christ came from the East. You want to know the true faith? You better go back to the East. Because that's where it all began. Go to the East. Don't seek Christ in the West. There's a lot of counterfeit in the West. Go back to the source where it all began. 
The sun rises from the east. This is one of the reasons why Jesus Christ came from the east, not the west, for he is the son of righteousness, S-U-N. That's why he shined from the east. To enlighten the entire globe, especially the west. But the west is not learning that lesson yet. Look at the west. So many fake churches, so many fake leaders calling themselves Christians, teaching absolute poison, feeding the flock poison. I'll never let go of the East. That's my Lord. That's my Savior. He's from the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus, Yeshua of Nazareth. Wow. Do you have time? Plenty? Plenty? Okay. And I heard the, verse 5, and I heard the angel of the waters saying, this is the angel of the waters, the angel of the church. The angel of the waters saying, you are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, you are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and the one who was and the one who is to be, because you have judged these things. You're righteous, O Lord. Man, I wish I had the time. Amazing how the Holy Spirit is inspiring John the Beloved to write. You know, when you read the Holy Bible, you need to stop at every dot. Everything has a meaning. When the angel of the waters, meaning the church, when the angel of the church is speaking, look how he is referring to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. First of all, he is saying, you are what? Righteous, O Lord, the one who is and, and who was and who is to be. You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is, who was and is to be. The one who is the Holy Spirit, the one who was God the Father, the one who is to be God the Son. Currently, we are living in the one who is, who is the Holy Spirit. We walk, we exist, and we live in the Holy Spirit who dwells and engulfs the church of Christ. The Holy Spirit is, it's his time now. So the one who is Holy Spirit, the one who was the Father, the Father who loved us from the very beginning. And the one who is to come, the second coming of the Messiah, the Son of God. For Christianity believes in the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one in nature and one in essence. God is one in three persons, but in one nature, in one essence. But the angel of the church is referring to Jesus as the Lord. I'm going to just... Go a little bit more forward. Look at verse 6. I'll come back to the Lord. Verse 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. The angel of the waters, the angel of the church, is calling out to the Lord, to Jesus, saying, You're righteous, O Lord. You're righteous, O Lord. Because... What have you done? Because you have given them blood to drink. Why? Because they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. The church, when it walked away from her savior, leaders started killing one another. They shed the blood of the saints. All I'm going to say is this. I won't go into much details. The medieval ages witnessed a lot of bloodshed within Christendom. Within Christendom. Christians who are supposed to be brothers in Christ killed each other. There was a bloodbath throughout the 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all these medieval ages. 
Because you killed the saints, the blood of the saints that you shed, the Lord is righteous. He will make you drink of the blood which you have shed because this is their just which is due to them. What goes around comes around. You kill, you'll be killed. Simon, put the sword back in its place because if you take by the sword, you shall be taken by the sword. The Lord's sword is not this metal that chops heads. The Lord's sword is his word. For his word is sharper than a two-edged sword. And his word is love. Christianity doesn't chop heads. Christianity restores heads that have been chopped by Satan. When the church chased the world, when the church allowed mammon, money, the roots to all evil, the love of money, when the church chased the thrones and power, they started killing their fellow Christians. The way you kill those saints and shed their blood, you will drink from the blood, for the Lord is righteous, and this is your justice, O church, whom you have denied your heavenly groom. So it looks like there will be a lot of blood, uh, bloodshed in the end times of the end times church. There will be a lot of killing happening. Wow. For they have shed the blood of saints, verse 6, and prophets, and he have given them blood to drink. Just like as you did you will receive as well for it is their just due look at verse 7 and I heard another from the altar another angel from the altar saying even so Lord God Almighty true and righteous are your judgments the angel of the waters how did he refer to Jesus Christ you are righteous Lord the angel of the altar. Now, the angel of the waters is the angel of the church. So who is the angel of the altar? The altar represents the Israelite nation, the Jewish people. So what is the altar? The church of Christ of the Old Testament. What is the angel of water? The church of Christ of the New Testament. Because Christ is the good shepherd to two branches of his beloved church one branch called the old testament referred to by the altar and the other one is the new testament referred to by the rivers of water the angel of the rivers of water refers to jesus christ you are righteous O lord who is who was and who is to be why? Because the New Testament church, who came and reached out to her? The Lord. This Lord, who is He? He is the Logos. He is the Son of God. Who sent Him? The Father. And now, what did the Lord give us after His ascension? The Holy Spirit who is the Holy Spirit, who was the Father that sent me from the beginning as the token of love to be your Savior and Redeemer if you truly accept me. And so God loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. See, the New Testament church is referring to Jesus Christ as the righteous Lord and speaking the Trinitarian language who is the Holy Spirit who was the Father who is to be the second coming of the Son see the language but look at the angel of the Old Testament church as the referred to as the altar look how he is referring to the Lord Jesus verse 7 and I heard another from the altar saying now this is the Old Testament the Jewish people but the Jewish people of the end times who are 
part of the Old Testament church because they still follow the Old Testament because they never believed in the coming of the Messiah over 2,000 years ago. Therefore, the New Testament to the Jewish people is non-existent. They don't accept it. They say this is not the Messiah who was crucified according to you Christians. Our Messiah is yet to come. Is yet to come. So how is this angel referring to the Lord? Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. The New Testament, you are righteous, O Lord. Righteous, righteousness, the angel of the New Testament referred it to the Lord himself. The Old Testament angel is saying, you are what? Lord God Almighty. Different language. The other one is saying, who is, who was, and who is to be. This one is saying, you are Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty. All three, one after the other. Not Lord and God and Almighty. No, Lord God Almighty, all in one. Different language. You are Lord God Almighty, true and righteous. The other one is saying, you are righteous, Lord. This one is saying, true and righteous, not you, your judgment. What's going on? I'm going to give you a couple of verses very quickly. Those who are writing, you can write them down. Actually, earlier this evening we read Psalm 100. So Psalm 100 verse 3, look what it says. Psalm, book of Psalm, verse, uh, uh, Psalm 100 verse 3. Know that the Lord himself is God. So who is the Lord? God. Who is the Lord? God. Know that the Lord himself is God. Leviticus 18.2. This is for my beloved Jewish people. Levit Leviticus 18.2. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, this is directed to the sons of Israel, not us, not the entire world, the 12 tribes of Israel only. Leviticus 18.2, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. Psalm 103 says, know that the Lord himself is God. And speak, Leviticus 18, 2, speak to the sons of Israel and say this, that the Lord is your God. And I'll give you this verse and we'll elaborate on these three verses. Psalm 103, uh, Leviticus 18, 2, Genesis 3, 8. Genesis 3, 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God the Lord God and they heard the son of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day when Adam ate from the forbidden tree through Eve the good old wife anyone married well done I'll pray for you extra just kidding just kidding um, when Adam, our father, ate from the forbidden tree because his wife Eve gave him to eat, they realized they were naked. So they both hid behind a fig tree. Why? Because, why do we say the fig tree? Because they made for themselves out of fig leaves clothes to cover their nakedness. So they made out of fig leaves kind of a covering for their nakedness. This is why we say they hid behind a fig tree. They heard, Adam and Eve, they heard the Lord God walking in the garden saying, Adam, where are you? 
Cheeky, naughty boy. He says, we're hiding behind the tree. Why are you hiding, Adumi? Because we are naked. Who told you you are naked, naughty Adumi? Aha, uh -huh. you must have eaten from that forbidden tree when I said to you, don't ever eat from this tree. You ate, didn't you? Naughty Adumi. Good one. <laughs> They heard the Lord God. This angel is saying, you are Lord God Almighty. True and righteous are your judgments. True and righteous are your judgments. The angel of the New Testament, you are righteous, O Lord, who is, who was, and who is to be. Different language. The New Testament was revealed to her that God is Trinity. The Old Testament did not accept Jesus Christ of Nazareth over 2,000 years ago. They deny it altogether. They say, this is not the Messiah who came. And they are still living in denial of the Messiah who came over 2,000 years. How is the Lord going to deliver and bring back the Jewish people of the end times to him through his word? How did he bring us back to him, the New Testament, through the holy baptism? Through the holy baptism. He who is baptized he who believes in the gospel and is baptized is saved. So we receive the gospel and the holy baptism, one of the seven sacraments. This is our coming back to the Lord. It's a long story. And it's a kind of controversial, controversial to somewhat degree to some of our beloved people. With all love and respect. But this was the new birth, baptism, the new birth. So the Lord gave birth to us through the holy baptism and adopted us to be sons and heirs to the throne of the Almighty God. And God became our heavenly daddy. We were adopted as sons to the Almighty God through the holy baptism. This is how he brought us out of the world into the kingdom of heaven. It's a very long story, so don't judge me <laughs> by just not even scratching the surface. But the Old Testament people of the end times who are the Israelite, the Jewish people, our beloved Jewish, the Lord will bring them back through his word. You are Lord God Almighty. The New Testament says you are righteous, O Lord. And the Lord God was walking in the Garden of Eden. And the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Psalm 100 verse 3. Now, when the Lord Jesus rose from the dead, now please pay attention. Won't be long. When the Lord Jesus rose from the dead, the first time he appears to those disciples who were in the upper room. One of them was not present, Thomas, the apostle. So the disciples said to Thomas, after the Lord went, they said, the Lord is risen, he appeared here, we saw him, we believe now he is truly risen. Thomas said, I won't believe until I see, until I touch. The Lord Jesus came again. And this time he made sure that Thomas is not absent, is present. And then he came and he said, Thomas, come. See and touch. I don't want you to be a non-believer, but a believer. But blessed are those who did not see and believed in me. But I'm going to give you a chance. What did Thomas say to Jesus Christ of Nazareth? He said, you are my Lord and God. You are what? My Lord 
and God. When, when the archangel Gabriel went and greeted my sweetheart, our sweetheart, the virgin of all virgins, Mother Mary. And then he said to the Holy Mother that your auntie Elizabeth is also, though she who was called barren is also now, has conceived. There is a child in her womb. The Holy Mother rushes to the desert of Judea. She enters the house of Elizabeth and Zechariah, the righteous priest. And when Elizabeth greets the Holy Mother, what does she say? How blessed am I for the mother of my Lord come to me. Not my God, my Lord. Thomas looked at the Lord and he said, you are my Lord and my God. Elizabeth got, was filled by the Holy Spirit. She saw in that womb, it was revealed to her by the Holy Spirit. She saw in the womb of Mary, there is a baby boy. This baby boy, she referred to him as her Lord. You are Lord God Almighty, the Old Testament, that angel of the altar. In Aramaic, Syriac, the word Lord is Mara. The word Lord is the word Mara. The word Mara actually derives from the word Maria. The word Maria also comes from it, the word Mar'ya. Now Mar'ya is talking here about shepherdhood. Shepherdhood. Maria Nar'ain. The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23. Now the Lord is my shepherd. The word shepherd in Aramaic Syriac is Nar'ain. The word Nar'ain is Mar'ya referring to looking after the flock being the shepherd now therefore when you refer to jesus as the lord you are referring to him as your lord your shepherd can you see the shepherd yes can you see god no The church of the New Testament called Jesus Lord. Why? Because I saw you. We saw you. We didn't see God, we saw a human. But when we saw this human, we believed in this human. There is, there was, and there is to be. There is the Father, there is the Holy Spirit, and there is the Son. God is in this person. So who is the Lord? The one you see. Who is God? The one who is hidden, invisible. Elizabeth said, the mother of my Lord came to me. I can't believe this. I must be the most fortunate woman on the face of this planet. Why did she say the mother of my Lord? Because she saw that baby, by the power of the Holy Spirit, she saw a human being, meaning the Lord can be seen with the naked eye. God cannot be seen. The New Testament church, her eyes were opened to see this human being the true God. And this God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit was Father, is to be the second coming. The church is waiting for the second coming of the Son. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, this is the church believe in Jesus Christ. You are righteous. Righteous means all your deeds were of 
divine nature. All your deeds were of divine nature. You came to give us righteousness. And righteousness is you. And you dressed up, you dressed us up in you. Galatians 3, 27. You who have been baptized into Christ have put on the Christ. Who is the Christ? The righteous one of his father. But the angel of the Old Testament, you are Lord God Almighty. True and righteous are your judgments, not you, your judgments. What are the judgments of God? Laws. A judgment is a set of laws. And what is the law? Words put together. So the Lord will deliver the Israelite nation by his word. What is his word which they haven't believed in yet? The New Testament. The return of the Israelite nation in the end of times is when they believe in the New Testament, not the old. Because they already believe in the old. But since they missed out on the New Testament, they are still misinterpreting the old. Because without the new, you can never fully understand what the old is saying. Because the new is the fulfillment of the old. As Saint Augustine puts it this way, he says the New Testament is the Old Testament concealed and the Old Testament is the New Testament revealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament concealed and the Old Testament is the New Testament revealed. Meaning in the Old Testament there was the New Testament concealed in it, but it was never revealed until the New Testament came. When did the New Testament come? When Jesus was born. Since they have denied Jesus first coming, the New Testament is still concealed in the Old Testament for our beloved Jews. No matter what they interpret, what they translate of the Old, they will never get it right. They'll miss the mark. Because unless they believe in the New Testament, the Old will never be revealed in the light truly to them. That's why in the end times, when they go through the great tribulations, they will come back and confess Jesus Christ, we have crucified you over 2,000 years ago. You are the true Messiah who came. We believe in you. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Have mercy on us, O son of David. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of Mary, son of Joseph, have mercy on us. When they reach out to the Lord and cry out because of the great tribulation which will which will decimate Israel. Then they will wake up and their eyes will be opened. They'll cry out to the Lord. How is he going to deliver them? When they cry out to the Lord, they believe, they will believe in the New Testament. This is why the angel of the altar said, you are Lord God Almighty. Man, who is the Lord? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They called him God. They will believe he is God. But this God is almighty. Do you have time? Tough luck. <laughs> when you say, when the Holy Bible talks about God, especially the Old Testament, it refers to God almighty, all powerful. What is the difference? Almighty, all powerful. All-powerful God is whenever something is done wrongly, if God uses his power, he will wipe that thing from existence. So if I make a mistake, if I sin, if God uses his power to deal with me, he will have to wipe me from existence. I thank him for also being almighty. He chose to use his mightiness, not his power. What is almighty God? Almighty, I destroy things 
Because he's almighty, out of destruction, he brings construction. Out of a desert, he brings an oasis. Out of the grave, he brings resurrection. Out of darkness, he brings light. Out of a sinner, he brings a saint. This is almighty. So in the end, when they cry out to Jesus Christ, they will call him Lord God Almighty. We thank you for treating us and dealing with us through your mightiness, not through your powers, because you would have wiped us if you had used your powers. But since you used your mightiness, yet we were sinners, you brought us out of sin into sanctity and sanctity. True and just are your judgments. <laughs> because what's going to bring the Jews is the word. That's why judgments are his words. When a judge passes a, a, a judgment, what is he passing? Words. I hereby sentence you to death by lethal injection. Man, I'm harsh. <laughs> Death by lethal injection. What did I just say? That's a judgment. But what, what is this judgment? Words. Now who is the word? The son. S-O-N. In the beginning, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the logos, the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. You are Lord God because the word is the Lord who is God. And this Lord who is God is almighty. Jesus Christ, the Logos, will deal with the Jewish people of the end times with his mightiness because out of their destruction, he will bring construction. He won't wipe them, he will deliver them. Why? Because God is love. And therefore, true and righteous are your judgments. Now we came to the truth when we accepted the New Testament. True and righteous is the New Testament. And when we accepted the New Testament, our eyes opened up on the Old Testament. Can I say one thing about the Old Testament? And I hope I'm already being attacked by some of our beloved Jewish people. <laughs> I hope this is not going to add to it. I'm not, definitely that's not my intention. Moses in the Old Testament says, when you buy something from a shop, before you eat in it, you need to cleanse it, you need to purify it. Water, fire, purification. So he said, you need to, you need to um, purify your plates. You need to pur purify your spoons. You need to purify your big dishes. Until now, our beloved Jews use this method. They wash them. They purify them before they eat. Because if you buy them from the shop and you eat in them just like that, you've just defiled yourself. The, the New Testament is concealed in the old and the old is revealed by the new. When the New Testament came to someone like me, when I read what Moses, our beloved prophet, had said about the dishes, the plates and the spoons, because the New Testament I received and I accepted, it opened my eyes to what Moses truly was saying in the spirit, not in the literal sense, but in the spiritual sense. Mo the Lord God said to Moses, tell the Israelite to wash their dishes, their plates, and their spoons before they eat in them, otherwise they will defile themselves. Mos the Lord was saying to Moses, literally, the dish is your body, the plate is your heart, the spoon is your deed. Purify your body, purify your heart, purify your spoons, otherwise you are defiled in the eyes of God. What spoons? What plates? What dishes? I'm talking about you. 
Sabbath. They don't even press a button lest they break Sabbath. Sabbath is not a day. Sabbath is a person called, not a, the person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the Sabbath. So if you're worshiping God, the Lord, on a Saturday, you're wrong. Because, because it's light. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. The Lord God in the Old Testament, when he gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, he said to him, sanctify Sabbath and come and worship me and it do not work. For this is the day of my rest. This is when God rested. Because God created everything in three days and in the next three days he filled what he created. See, some people say God created everything in six days. No. The six days are two and two sections, three and three. The first three days God created. The other three days God filled what he created. Day one goes hand in hand with day four. Day two goes hand in hand with day five. Day three goes hand in hand with day six. God created in three days. And then the other three filled those three days which he created. On the seventh day, God rested. What, which day was the seventh? Saturday, Shabbat. In Aramaic, we call it Shabtha. You see, Aramaic, Hebrew, Arabic, Semitic languages, they are cousins. One family. Khabibi. One family. So, Shabbat. Shabtha literally means rest. Nihutha, Shilyutha, rest. So they took the day literally and they worshiped God on Saturday because God said, I rested on the seventh day, which happens to be Saturday, Shabbat, Shabtha. If the days of creation are literal, we've got a problem. Day one, there was an evening and a morning. Day two, there was an evening and a morning. Day three, there was an e Sorry, day two, nothing. I'm getting old. No, no, sorry, day two, evening, morning. Day three, evening, morning. Day four, evening, morning. Day five, evening, morning. Day six, evening, morning. Day seven, nothing. No evening, no morning. But from day one to six, all of them had evening and a morning. Evening means beginning, morning, end. The day of the world, the world gives you its day. The day of the world begins with morning, ends with evening. The world gives you its day with light, but ends you in darkness. God gives you his day, begins with darkness, ends with light your beginning you are living in sin but if you keep staying with God at the end you will be living in the day righteous saint the world deceives gives you the light wow it's beautiful but then feeds you poison darkness destruction God never lies. He says the beginning of you is a fallen nature. You broke my word in the Garden of Eden. You are a sinner. This is your beginning. Darkness because sin is darkness. But if you come and receive my son Jesus Christ through the precious blood which he shed on Calvary, he will wipe your sins and turn your darkness into light. This is the day of God. Evening is the beginning but the end is the light. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who walks with me, darkness never comprehends him. But day seven, there is no evening, there is no morning. Meaning that day seven is still continuing. My beloved, it's not literal. My question now to every human being, when does God, those who believe in God, when does God rest? Does God rest? I mean, okay, God created, 
the six days he was working 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 and then when and then when he finished everything he said you know what I'm gonna have a rest doesn't work let me tell you one thing when you build the house this is the process of creation yes you're building the house and you're so excited it's a newly married couple this is their first ever home this is their own man they're excited so they are working hard building the house it could take six up to 12 months maybe more if it's a mansion after finishing the building they give you the keys you say thank God finally I can rest you put the key in that door after one year of hard work you put the key in that door and you open the door and you say hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus now I can rest no now your work is about to begin for the rest of your life it takes a year to build a house it takes a lifetime to maintain it so does God stop working never does God rest never God created what he needed to create and now he is looking after what he's created forever so so what is God rest then only one thing God will only rest when I and you are sin free. When we are sin free, God will say, finally, I have rested. For the ones I love are no longer living in sin. It is then and then only we can come and be in his holy presence because sin is darkness and God is holy light can darkness mix with light impossible it is either day or it's either night it is either light or darkness the two can never live together when I am in sin I'm living in darkness I am separated from God and God through his beloved son Jesus became my dad can dad be at peace when his children are lost in the street Parents, I ask you, earthly parents, can you ever rest when your son or your daughter is missing out there? Gone, drugs destroyed them, alcoholism destroyed them, gambling destroyed them, wrong, wrong friends destroyed them, they are in prison. Can mom and dad live, sleep comfortably and their children are in jail, their children are in the street lost, can they live comfortably? I ask you, answer me. Impossible. How much more our Heavenly Father can be at rest when we are lost in our sinful life? When will God rest? When I receive His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, by the precious blood which He shed on Calvary, He wiped all of my sins away. Now I'm sin free. I am now the Son of God, sinless. Because to be the son of God, you must be like your father, sinless. Only one is sinless, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When you receive the sinless Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, you become the son to the almighty God. God becomes your dad. Then you're able to enter your heavenly father's house. When we enter our heavenly father's house, then the father will say, finally, I am at rest. My son was dead and now he is alive. He was lost and now he is found. Finally, I rest. This is God's rest. Therefore, what is Shabbat? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God will rest when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You with me? That's why Shabbat has no beginning nor end because the true Shabbat, who is Christ Jesus, lives forever. There is no beginning nor end to Jesus, who is the true Shabbat. This is the rest of God, His Son. Not Saturday. Man, until when are we going to be like little kindergarten kids? We need to mature, grow up in spirituality. 
This is the true Shabbat. My goodness. But you see, unless you receive the New Testament, the Old Testament will always be hidden. Because it takes God to reveal His Word to you. Not some teacher, not some theologian. It takes God to reveal His Word because His Word is infinite and eternal like Him. That's why this Word is God Himself. Who can explain the Word which is God? Only God because He is the only being that has no beginning nor end to Him. I am finite. I can never understand the infinite being. It takes the infinite God to explain Himself to me and you. And this took place when Jesus Christ of Nazareth was born. The New Testament church was born on Pentecost, the 50th day. The Holy Spirit descended as tongues of fire. He gave us a tongue of fire and with it we devour the world for the Lord Jesus. Because fire eats everything in its path. He gave me a tongue. When I speak, it is the Holy Spirit speaking. The Holy Spirit is that fire that pierces the heart and changes and cleanses and purifies and brings the lost soul back to the Father. And the Father will say, finally now, since my children are back to me, they were lost in the world and now they are found in the church. They were dead in sin and now they are living in my son Jesus Christ, the righteous one, the firstborn and the one who rose from the dead. Now they are in my presence. God the Father says, this is my rest. And I rest too from talking. Enough of me now, my dear Jacqueline, if we can uh, listen to another hymn, it would be wonderful. Let's just contemplate in the next couple of minutes. It belongs to the Lord. And on this, my beloveds, I'll say this to all of us. Don't ever revenge for yourself. Let God do that for you. If someone has hurt you, if someone has persecuted you, if someone has gone against you and tried to decimate you and ruin your image and reputation, keep your silence. Let the Lord speak and see what he's going to do for you. He will bring those who have gone against you and make them bow at your feet. Believe you me. Believe you me. The Lord placed me in front of Satan for 12 months. For 12 months, every single moment was hell. Do you think this useless servant talks because he's a Christian only because he's read the Holy Bible only no I know the Lord I can describe him to you from head to toe personally so this is my cry out out of love people will judge people may judge People may misunderstand. People may retaliate in their own ways. But that's their choice. I'm not concerned. I'm not worried. I'm not talking to upset, offend anyone. And far from it, judge anyone. Because the Lord is the judge. God is the judge. Who am I? But one thing, the Lord broke me and made me. It is the Lord who is talking. Who am I? A piece of dust, a minute piece of dust, an absolute nothing. It's His voice, 
my beloved. For 12 months, I lived in hell. I saw hell. I tasted hell. Literally. Not dream. So when people come and say, is there God? Is Jesus real or not? What are you talking about? <laughs> now Jesus is not God. Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> I'm not saying that the Lord Jesus is God himself because I'm a Christian. No. Because he revealed himself to me. I know he is God. I know. I will never go back on this over my dead body. Now if people misunderstand, judge, do, that's fine. I'll pray for you, my dear friend. I'm not here to upset you, but I'm here to tell you what the truth and who the truth is. The truth is Jesus Christ came over 2000 years ago. He was crucified. So to my beloved Jewish people, this is the truth. And to my beloved Muslim people, this is the truth. He was crucified. His name is Jesus Christ and he is God revealed in the flesh. Whether we believe or not, this is the truth. It's not about Christians, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, atheists. No, we are all humans. And as far as humanity is concerned, we are all one. We need to love one another. We need to pray for one another as far as humanity is concerned. But when it comes to the truth, the truth must be said as is. There is no hypocrisy. There is no twisting falsification. There is no buying and selling. It's not because I love you. I'm going to try and make it blend in and make it tailored to what you believe and what you perceive and accept. No, I'll say it even if it offends my earthly father, my earthly mother, the closest most loved person to my heart. When it comes to Jesus, I give not one penny about no one. With all love and respect. Very simple. It's not about these clothes. At all. It's about the truth. The one who created everything that is visible and invisible. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's the love of my life. My sweetheart, my sugar bun, my honey, my sweetness, my chocolate, my milkshake, my fish burger, my hamburger, even though I'm vegetarian, my everything. It is him. It is him. He came over 2000 years ago from the tribe of Judah. One of the sons, one of the 12 sons of Jacob, who was called Israel by the Lord himself. He came from the tribe of Judah. And he, by birth, is a Jew. He was crucified at the age of 33 and 4 months. He died in the flesh on the cross. He was put in the tomb and he rose from the dead as he promised. And as it is written in the Old Testament about the true Messiah who came over 2000 years ago. Believe me, I went up there by his grace and I saw everything that is written in the Old and the New Testament is 100% true. There is hell. I lived it for 12 months. Literally, no dreams. Literally. Satan is very ugly. And very scary, by the way. No. <laughs> you know, when, when he comes, you, you get like an electric kind of a f electrifying sensation going through your body. All the hair stands. But in Jesus' mighty name, I step on him. I step on him. What is happening in the world is Satan. 100% Toyota coronavirus Satan Climate change Satan All Satan AI Satan Apple iPod I, iPhone iPad Satan Satan 
12 months. You know what he said to me? That piece of ugly creature? He said, I'm going to kill you. I said, yeah? He said, yeah. You do anything against me, I'll kill you. In my heart, in front of him, I asked the Lord, Lord, let me see who's going to win. You or this piece of wreck. This ugly thing called Satan. The Lord showed me. Five coals of fire came from heaven, decimated him. Afterwards he said, these five coals of fire are my five wounds that I received on the cross. Through my wounds, I decimated Satan. He is six foot one, the Lord Jesus, as a human. He's got a long tan skin. You know, he's Middle Eastern. God, I'm Middle East, baby. Yo, bro. Habibi. Where is the tabule? He's Middle Eastern. Six foot one. Tan skin, long face. Crispy brown hair split in the middle and comes down so beautifully to the shoulders. He's got a beard. It's not white because he's still 33 and kicking baby after 2023 years. Never ages. The sweetheart of all sweethearts. He will always be 33. Well, in our church we say 30 is the age of his humanity. The three years where he, where he revealed his divinity. Let's say 33 years. He's still 33. Young as ever. Stunning as ever. Breathtaking as ever. Magnificent. The beauty of the all beauties. You become speechless. You become dumbfounded. You become a nothing when you see him in front of you. In front of you. The sun, S-U-N, of righteousness. He is the light of the world. So, because it's his word. But he showed me this. Truly he is the light. The light that emanates from him, the, the sun that rises every day, will be embarrassed to shine when Jesus shines forth. The sun will go and hide, will say, my light is filthy, is dark compared to your light. His light is pure, holy, pure gold. None like it here. This is the truth. Up to you when a believer or not. Up to you. The Lord showed me both heaven and hell. They're real. Be careful of Satan. He is, he is very cunning. Oh. Oh, he's so, he is so deceptive. He'll make it look for you as if this is it and there is nothing else. He'll make it like heaven for you, this world. But in it, there is poison. 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 Don't fall. Don't fall for the temptations of this filth called the world. It is filth. Jesus Christ is God. He is not Catholic. He is not Orthodox. Definitely not Protestant. He is God revealed in the flesh. Wake up, church. Wake up. You need to come back to the truth. Stop talking out of your empty heads. Let God speak through you. Let God reveal the truth. For He is the truth to you and to the whole world. Let him speak. All you need to do is bow your head before him. Enough of you. Say, Lord, it is all about you, nothing about me.
Oh, by the way, the Lord Jesus is still single and available. Anyone, you know? <laughs> There's time to come back and say, Lord, will you accept me? He will say, yes, I'm still available. Till the day he calls it a day, he is still available. Very quickly, my beloved. Um, Sunday, the 9th of July, will be the 40th day for the departure of my beloved earthly mother. I will be uh, celebrating the Holy Mass for her 40th um, day uh, in the morning at 9 a.m. in Assyrian and in English at 6 p.m. So um, I ask you all to pray for my earthly mom. Uh, may God rest her soul in peace and grant her his kingdom uh, amongst all the uh, just and righteous saints in heaven. Uh, she was an absolutely wonderful lady. She was a, a magnificent mother. And uh, I miss her till this very moment dearly. I miss her. But I believe and I know where she is. That's why I am happy for her. Definitely beyond measures I'm happy for her because I know I have a saint in heaven. But uh, on earth, still in the flesh, um, especially when I go home, I've always lived with my mom all my life. This is the Lord's choice. I tried, I tried to go away many, many, many years ago when I was still very young, before this beard became like Santa. Um, I, I wanted to go and live somewhere where nobody knows where I am and who I am. But uh, for some reason, the Lord chose to keep me with my mom. I tried to leave her. I couldn't. I was chained. And there was a reason for that. May the Lord's will be, always be done. So after uh, over 50 years of my life being with my mom, always, never left her side. It's very hard now when I go home and I see it empty. And everywhere I looked, there is um, the... Um, the presence of my mom there, but I thank the Lord. So please pray for my mother, my earthly mom, but I thank the Lord Jesus because he gave me uh, this m other mother who remains with me forever. Her name is Mary. This is my mom. This is my sweetheart, Mariam, Mother Mary. So, um, so on, the, on Sunday the 9th of July, so it's not this Sunday, the Sunday after will be the 40th. Um, we'll be celebrating the Holy Mass for uh, my mom's departure. Um, the uh, Good Shepherd Youth Ministry meeting, the monthly meeting will be held uh, Saturday, 1st of July. I think it's, is it tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow is the youth ministry meeting. Monthly meeting, please, if you're 18 plus. If you haven't enrolled, you can come tomorrow and enroll. Very vital to be in the youth ministry. Be equipped by the word of God and the love of God there. So tomorrow is the meeting, um, Saturday, 1st of July at 12 noon. It will be held here at the church. Tomorrow, 12 midday, the uh, monthly meeting for our youth ministry. Again, a reminder about the uh, fake accounts, the Facebook, Instagram that are made under my name, please. Uh, avoid them, report them, and, and let other people know that they are fake. Bishop Murray never has, never will, uh, any um, social media accounts under his personal name. All it is under the churches, so please, please, please make sure that you tell everyone about this. And um, a reminder about the, um, uh, the, uh, the trip to uh, Turkey, Lebanon, and Syria uh, sometime in August. Um, if you, if those who have been donating money for this cause, may the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus reward you abundantly. I'm not sure. We've been getting um, very generous donations from everywhere, from within Australia and outside of Australia. I lost count now. I don't want to say the figure, but the figure is getting bigger and bigger by the day. So keep it coming. The more we get money, the more we can reach out to people and help them. We want to go and, and visit the people that are literally left in the street. This was my, my, my life's dream. And uh, I pray uh, the Lord Jesus has brought it into fruition uh, sometime in August, next uh, couple of months. So if you'd like to donate more, this is the um, website, uh, the Good Samaritan Aid Society. 
which is Jesus, G-S-A-S dot org dot A-U. Jesus, G-S-A-S dot org dot A-U. You can pay directly into the account or using PayPal as well. God bless you for your generous donations. May the Lord reward you abundantly. Um, I think that's it. That's it. I love you guys, but the Lord Jesus loves you the most. Let us stand for the finale prayer, please. Actually, can I tell you a joke? While you're standing. If I can remember it now, hang on a second. Man, I'm getting old. Um, it's gone, can you believe it? <laughs> Oh, we have a special guest in here. Well, you're not going to be seen on the, on the video. Can you stand over here a little bit? Uh, can you please welcome Veronica? This is my sweetheart. Yep. Veronica is an angel. Um, she is so sweet. She is honey, honey, honey. I want to like just eat her. Eat her like this. Ching, ching, ching. With these, with these big, big cheeks like that. Oh, I love you. You want to stand with me while we we'll say the finale prayer? Yes? Okay? Okay. Oh yes, I remember the joke. <laughs> five ants rented a house with another five ants. Will they be considered as tenants? <laughs> Did you get it? Good. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again into eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, now and forever and evermore. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved. God bless.